Hello everyone. Welcome to the 2020 edition of the Digital by Doron Cutting Room Floor video. And as with all the prior videos, this one is still shots. All taken with my camera and I believe I've shot all these. I've tried to, to shred out any that uh, other people might have picked up my camera and shot a photo. And uh, as before, I have subtitles on these and you can turn them on. They're not on automatically unless you have set your YouTube channel up to turn the uh, subtitles on automatically. And uh, they have a little bit of additional information. They do cover up a little bit of the photos sometimes, so uh, you may you may want to watch the video twice. Yay! <laughs> More counts. Getting close to that million views if you have been paying any attention. I'm not very far away from that at all, in fact. Anyway, I just want to invite you to hang around after the video. In January 2020, a small group of us traveled from Oklahoma to West Texas. We'd spend one night at the Maverick Inn in Alpine, then head out through the town of Marfa to Pinto Canyon and drive along the Rio Grande River to Big Bend Ranch State Park. We'd spend two nights there, one at the Guali campsites and the second at Tres Papalotes. We'd also drive the road to nowhere, amazed by the spectacular terrain of the collapsed dome known as El Solitario. After two nights at the ranch, we'd next head over to Big Bend National Park. There we'd be fortunate to secure two campsites for our four vehicles at Gravel Pit. They were nicer than that name suggests. The next day we'd drive along River Road, Black Gap Road, which is a Jeep Badge of Honor trail, visit the Mariscal Mine, and continue around to the incredible Santa Elena Canyon, a dramatic cut by the Rio Grande River between the U.S. and Mexico. We'd spend our final night in Terlingua, enjoying the popular Starlight Theater, before heading back to Oklahoma with a stop at the historic U.S. Army Cavalry site of Fort Stockton.
Following Native American footpaths dating back at least a thousand years, El Camino del Diablo has been traveled by conquistadores, explorers, missionaries, settlers, miners, and cartographers. Also known as Camino del Muerto, the road of the dead, crossing the Devil's Highway exposes one to unforgiving terrain and potentially unforgiving conditions that have historically been the cause of death for many of its travelers. In February, a group of us from Arizona and Oklahoma received permits to cross this amazing stretch of history that runs between Ajo and Yuma, just north of the U.S.-Mexican border. We drive through Cabeza Prieta National Wildlife Refuge and the Barium Goldwater Bombing Range, spending a night in each.
It was the brunt of the coronavirus pandemic and my overlanding plans had been spoiled. After several months stuck at home, I had to get out. So my friend Mike and I arranged to continue the Transamerica Trail, commonly called the TAD, from where Ray and I had stopped traveling at two years ago near Buffalo, Oklahoma. We both agreed that we'd practice social distancing. We wanted to demonstrate how one could still get out across this amazing country and remain as safe as possible. The trip was from Fort Supply, south of Buffalo near the Oklahoma Panhandle, where we'd camp on night one, to Natural Falls State Park in eastern Oklahoma. One of my goals was to address the reputation that Oklahoma gets from those who drive the full length of the TAT. That is, it's flat, the roads are straight, and there's lots of boring miles. So we'd travel off the TAT here and there to visit something interesting, including the Sawthouse Museum, Little Sahara State Park, the Great Salt Plains, the Twister Museum in Waukita, the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve, Osage Hills State Park, and Natural Falls State Park. On a couple nights, the weather would assail us with winds and lightning, heavy rains, and even hail, making our travels that much more challenging. The Oklahoma Adventure Trail, often called the OAT, was originally created as an ADV motorcycle route around the state. At over 1,400 miles in length, it's suitable for two-track travel. The route takes the adventurer past numerous historically, culturally, and geographically interesting points. I'd driven different sections of it in four prior trips. This time I would be joined by Mike, and for the first two days, his daughter Lucy. We would meet at Canton Lake State Park then spend the next few days traveling along the Oat from the town of Sealing to the Wichita Mountains Wildlife Refuge near the town of Medicine Park. During the drive, we'd visit the Black Kettle National Grasslands, the Washita Battlefield, Quartz Mountain State Park, and numerous historic buildings along the route. Most unexpected, however, was the terrain, which was delightfully not flat.
Hey everyone, welcome back. And I think I've got the video itself all set to go. I just need to add what I'm recording right now onto it. And But I did have a few things I wanted to discuss. It shouldn't take very long at all. And uh, I guess the first thing I want to talk about is, for those of you who aren't really active with uh, as content creators on YouTube, YouTube has changed their uh, policy regarding advertising on channels. And I've never had advertising on my channel. If you saw ads, it was because there was a dispute over copyright, uh, uh, who owned copyright on material, and, and so it, sometimes those took me a couple of weeks to get resolved before the ads would be removed. Uh, I have never used anybody else's copyrighted material on purpose. Uh, there was one inadvertent instance where the gentleman gave me permission but did not tell me that he actually did not own the copyright even though he was the performer. So uh, that's all been sorted out. Anyway, the new YouTube ad policy is they can put advertising on any video they want. So if you see advertising on my videos, they have nothing to do with me. I have no control over that, whether you see them or not, and what you see. I have no control over that. And I receive no funding for that. If you've got any complaints about advertising, send them to YouTube. But in reality, I understand what YouTube's up to. They're offering me this, this platform on which I can put these videos. And I have an awful lot of content on here now, a couple hundred videos up here now. And uh, they, they want to make a little bit of money off of it. So yes, I probably help attract some people to YouTube, but I don't give them any direct money other than unless they go watch some other video, which of course they're going to recommend. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, mod work. And I haven't been doing a lot of mods. <laughs> Uh, 2020 was one of them kind of years for a lot of us, and uh, I'm uh, through about, well, I'm not going to put a dollar value on it, but uh, basically let's just say that uh, my mod money for the Gladiator got used up for a new roof for the house, a new fence around the house, a new dishwasher, a new microwave, and a new heater and air conditioning system. All of that had to be done this past year. And uh, some of it I had anticipated and had been saving up for, and some of it was not anticipated and I had not saved for. And I, of course, I have emergency funds, and I use some of that. And, and of course, I have uh, funds that I had saved to, to do mods in the Gladiator, and I used a lot of that. So, but I'm getting back, getting back uh, into that. And there's going to be some things coming up on the Wrangler. Believe it or not, I got some some things that I've uh, got going on there. Some pretty neat things. And there'll probably be a few things on the Gladiator as well. Although I'm not using the Gladiator as much for overlanding, I did take it on two, well, half these trips. To, uh, there's four trips in this video, and I uh, took it on two of the trips, and I took the Wrangler on the other two. And uh, then the last thing I want to talk about is uh, other video projects. I have some really old videos. You may not have even watched them before, and uh, I never really prepared good uh, teasers for them. One, I have a teaser. My daughter kids me about a seven and a half minutes long. She says, what kind of a teaser is that? <laughs> it's like, well, a long one. <laughs> so uh, I, have, I have several videos like that. I'll be making new teasers uh, for them. And so you may see them pop up if, if you're a subscriber and you get notified. And uh, it, it's old content. It's not, it's not new content. It's just I'm going to create a teaser where the one didn't exist or I'm, in the case of that lengthy one, I'm going to shorten it. So you can see that. And uh, during 2020, one of the things that happened here at my house was a big ice storm. And uh, got, I got a lot of kind of neat pictures of that ice on my, on my Wrangler, on my Gladiator. There was a lot. And uh, it was actually two storms, two days apart. Uh, the first storm came through and actually caused a lot of damage. It was so early in the season that the trees had not dropped all their leaves. So therefore the ice got on the leaves and therefore the limbs were a lot heavier than they normally would be and they got pulled down. So I don't know, it was over 300,000 people in the Oklahoma City Metro without, le without electricity and, and I was one of them. And I was without electricity for uh, about eight days. Um, I lost a lot of food in my refrigerator freezer and uh, I, uh, it was cold because <laughs> didn't have any heat, didn't, uh, didn't have any lights. 
uh, other than a flashlight. So uh, I did a couple things. One thing was I bought a generator. Uh, it took a few days for that to be delivered. And in those few days, I, uh, I used a Wrangler to, uh, to keep my marine aquarium powered. Now, I have a marine, a saltwater aquarium. I have two aquariums. The other one's right over here. It's a freshwater. And uh, the saltwater aquarium's over in the living room. But uh, the, uh, the freshwater aquarium can do okay when it goes without electricity for a little while. But the marine aquarium doesn't do so well. The corals, the, uh, the livestock they're in, the snails, the fish, the uh, shrimp, and so on, uh, they don't like being without that circulating water and the chemistry being correct. And uh, that the uh, corals need light, uh, the correct kind of light. So uh, I used a Wrangler to power that, and, and that was successful. And I'm, I, I kind of, I don't want to say I had fun doing it because it was a pretty miserable experience going eight days without electricity. Second time in my life I've done that. It happened to me after a hurricane down in, uh, when I lived in Biloxi, Mississippi. But anyway, uh, so I'm going, to, I'm going to make a video about that. Uh, and the reason I want to make a separate video rather than discuss it all here is, is because there's some lessons learned as far as some things I've done to the Wrangler um, that proved useful in this, uh, dual batteries and things like that. Uh, and then also challenges that I had. Uh, so, uh, and then I had to do some repairs afterwards. And so I'll get into all that in, in, in a second video. I don't think it'll be a very long video, maybe a five, ten minute video, just talking about uh, the experience and how I used the Wrangler to, uh, uh, well, basically, I think I've already got the title, How My Wrangler Saved My Marine Aquarium. So you can look forward to that. The final thing is trips. Well, we're still in the pandemic. Uh, I am uh, 71 years old, but I also received an email the other day uh, from the from the powers that be that said, you're not in the group that's getting their shots yet. Stand by. So I'm standing by to stand by. I'm not trying to rush things. But, uh, but as soon as I get those shots out of the way, and uh, supposedly about five, six weeks total after you get the first shot, then three weeks later the second shot, then two, three weeks later, you're, uh, you're, you're good to go. Uh, although you still need to practice a certain amount of uh, care uh, because you could be a carrier for the disease even though you may not be susceptible to getting it yourself. So uh, once I get to that, I could be a carrier, but I, I hope I'm not. Uh, I'll go ahead and, and start traveling again. Uh, and I've got a few trips planned out, and I'll be getting on them. I don't want to give a lot of details about them right now because some of it may not happen for a variety of reasons, uh, partly because I may not be able to go for whatever reason, and, and then the second reason being uh, the people I'm planning these trips with may not be able to do them. So, uh, but... I hope to have some, some good news for us here in the, in the next couple of months where I can get back on a more regular schedule and get a little bit more regular content out to everybody. Anyway, that's all I have. Like I said, it was going to be a short studio chat. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you've got any questions, comments, I always appreciate them. Please leave them down in the remarks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.